Yes, hello. Skeeter Redding straight off the flight from Melbourne and Will Schofield off the flight from Gold Coast. Shelter Footy Cast here coming at you from Perth, Western Australia. Bit of a grand final review. It's done, dusted. Season 2022 is over. That's the Southern River Band, the local lads out of Thornley. Skeeter's here, Scoey's here. How are you, mate? Good to be with you, Scoey. Yes, a huge weekend of footy. Um, Let's be honest, though, as a grand final, as a spectacle, it was a complete dud. <laughs> it was a stinker. <laughs> and I was sitting next to a bloke, he's a really good uh, Sydney Swans man, um, Justin Warwick, and he's wearing the Sydney gear, and I might have had one too many. I said, the Swans have been absolutely pathetic. And he didn't take too kindly to that, so I apologise <laughs> to Justin. But it was like, it was like, and I'm, I'm not going to preface it, but going back to 15, yeah. you know, and Hodgie kicks that goal in the first quarter in the boundary. Yeah, no, you're going, I remember that. Yep. Like, yeah. <laughs> going, this is going nowhere good for West Coast, and the same for Sydney on Saturday. But anyway, there's a few stories out of that trip to Melbourne. You've probably got a couple of your, of your own. Yeah, correct. We'll get through as, as good as we can do. I'm not sure how many minutes of the grand final either of us have watched, <laughs> but we are going to get into it. I think it could be a good review of it. It might be just the fan's eye of how everything went down. If you're first time here on the Shoulder Footy Cast, we do this every Monday and Thursday. A bit of a preview, review. Now the footy season's done. We're going to be getting into a bit of trade permutations, a bit of a look around the rest of the world of sport as well. So we will continue to do this as we go. Skeeter won't be off on junkets over to Melbourne. He'll be locked in the green chair right here on the Shoulder Footy Cast. West Australian theme. Follow us on socials, Shelter Footy Cast on Instagram. Footy Cast at Shelter Brewing. Dot com a, uh, dot au is our email address. That one again, footycast at shelterbrewing.com.au. Shelter born and brewed in Bustleton, WA. Let's get into it. Some big moments of the round. The grand final. It was huge. Geelong went bananas after they won this. I saw some footage from down in Geelong Way. I'm Geelong boy. Yeah. Ryrie Street is, uh, there's, there's Packing Street, which is on sort of one side of town. And then right in the middle of town is Ryrie Street. So where the McDonald's is in town. And it was, it was a friendly riot. It was a friendly really? riot. Well, Jimmy Bartel spoke about it in 2007 when they had that drought break in mm. grand final. And uh, Geelong just turns into this. No one in Geelong doesn't go for Geelong. Even if you don't go for Geelong, you've got a Geelong scarf in your top drawer. So it just, <laughs> it was going bananas. People were just drinking on the street. Police couldn't care less. It, it, no one was stealing anything, just having a great time. So it was a big, big win for Geelong. It's almost a drought breaking win. Like people forget it's. Ten years since they won their last, it's a long period of time. Uh, Ma- well, maybe if you're not, a, if you're a St Kilda fan, or. no. But if, yeah, exactly. Like they've they've had a. You think of this century, they've been they've been super. They've always been around the mark. So I know they've had some disappointing prelim finals and and had some poor finals performances. I mean, they were in a GF two years ago against Richmond. Yep. So uh, you have to give absolute credit to to Chris Scott to the to the playing group to the club. They managed their season. Uh, superbly well. What do they finish with? Sixteen wins in a row. Yeah, so, uh, it was just it was a masterclass, and you know the age factor was was always talked about, but um, in many ways they just they were just the best team of the year, and you, you could not look back and say um, you know I don't think anyone who, who got through to the I mean Collingwood stretched them in a, in a qualifying yep. final, but I think they would have beaten anyone on the day. Yep, I think you're right there, Skeeter. We will get into a grand final uh, review in a little bit. A couple of other little big moments, little big moments. Mate, you had a spare grand final ticket on grand final day. Mm. How did you go? Did you get rid of it? No, so this is – I know you're going to take the piss. It's a lot – it's not it, – a long story short, so I went with Paul Ramsey from Travel and Sport Australia, and as it turned out, I got my – bought my mum a ticket through the Eagles. That was done. Yes. And one of the guys who was travelling – with the Perth party, his wife had a migraine, so she couldn't go. So anyway, he gave me his ticket because um, there were better seats than mum, but mum kept hers. So anyway, I thought, we'll sell this and give the money to the bloke. Um, and I'm walking into the MCG, beautiful day, and I'm with Rick Hart, who's you know, a very good fridge salesman, and wow. I regard him as one of the best, and a guy called Damien Hampson, who works at Channel 7, and they're both in sales. And I said, oh, I'm just a journalist, and I'm worried about you know getting scalping tickets. I thought it was scalping tickets. I was just <laughs> getting face value ticket. Um and we oh, there's bound to be. There's always people looking for tickets on grand final day. And we're walking around the MCG, and I saw one bloke a sign in the air, you know, saying "Faith Healer." And I thought that's no, not going to work. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Faith Healer. I, mean, I just need someone to put one ticket, please. I'll go and uh, make not make money, just get my face value, and then hand it to the bloke. That, anyway, so I'm waiting at the front at about one thirty, 
Um, Robbie Williams apparently is inside doing some really nice work. What you missed, Robbie Williams? Well, you know that because I'm he- texting you saying I'm <laughs> stuck I mean, in the Gold Coast. <laughs> what do you want me to do? Well, help me. Send a pigeon down there for you. <laughs> so I was just trying to get rid of the ticket, and as it turns out, my mum's saying, C- "Come inside, Robbie Williams is really good." Here I am standing outside with a, no, seriously, a couple of homeless people, about ten police, and listening to Robbie Williams <laughs> sing his guts out while I'm um, trying to flog a ticket, and then. Um, so I've missed the best part of the day of Grand yeah, Final Day. Absolutely, you have. And you've still got your ticket. Still <laughs> got my ticket. Didn't sell it. And of course, I thought, do I go out at quarter time? But the face value had gone, uh, lost about 90% of its value you when it was five goals to zip. You would have been giving it out out there. They would have been, I reckon that you would have been paying them to take I it off. I was going to give it to an attractive woman and just say, come, come in, go enjoy the day. Yes. Not to be. No. Maybe one of the homeless people would have enjoyed that, mate. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, yeah, very good. Um, uh, and then the last one I found quite interesting was uh, the club song, Geelong win, big margin, yeah. eighty points. The drug testers were there, which they they're, they're there mm. for every team. They delayed singing the song while Stengel did his drug test. Is that what happened? Well, oh. I, heard, I heard he was walking down the tunnel, yes, and got dragged or asked. Uh, yes. Excuse me, can you do a drug? Is that the? I mean, why wouldn't you wait till the song song is finished? What's yeah. going to change in that time? Yeah, so I would say maybe inexperience from Stingle because you can just tell them you can just you can just stand right next to me and follow me around while yeah. I sing the enjoy song. the great well while I enjoy the greatest time. You could you could leave them for an hour if you want. Yeah, yeah. You're in, it's not a it's not it's not cited by the drug test to have to go and do it. You can do whatever you want really, but they have to be with you. So anyway. Um, they delay that. He gets his drug test done and they win the grand final. He was outstanding, by the way. We will get into a grand final review in just a little bit. Thought we'd do a little bit of West Coast Frio rap first. Will Schofield, Mark Reddings on the Shelter Footy Cast. Not a whole lot going on in the West over here, Skeeter. There's, uh, so there's some trade talk, but nothing really happening. Of Good course, early, tra- well, I mean, trade, trade radios kicked off today. When's the trade period starts? That started today. No, Wednesday. Somewhere there. Who yeah, knows? It's coming up in the next week or so. Well, to add to trade, this is a bit of trade radio, this sort of stuff. Mm. Sean Darcy seen with Luke Jackson having beers on the weekend. That's the sort of material that we're going to get. Well, oh, he's going to Freo now. He's having beers with Sean Darcy. Why would he be having beers with Sean Darcy if he's not going to Freo? It sounds like it. Well, he's, following, <laughs> well, he's got you. He's following blokes on Instagram, isn't he? Jackson's is that, is following it? Dockers blokes on Instagram. Now, I don't know if that's a, uh, a guilt-edge sign that he's uh, heading that way, but... Um, yeah, I don't know if they know, they probably don't know each other until this. But yeah, I guess I guess it's it's a reasonable sign that they're on good terms, and that's probably it's that's where it's heading, isn't it, Scully? Oh, I think so. I don't I don't think West Coast are getting it done. So no, no. do they, do they really want to get it done? Um, I, I mean, they honestly they need him probably more than mm, Freo. Uh, true. Yeah. So, uh, but but the, their list profile, you know, Freo have been setting their list up since the start of this year to do this deal. So. It's not like they've just come up with this. They've cleared salary cap space to get a big deal like this done. And we're going to, you know, I've spoken about it before. We're going to see how it all spits out in the wash and and uh, gets there in the end. But other than that, uh, West Coast, Frio, why do I an interesting thing? A little, just this little, found this around, came across the desk a couple of weeks ago. West Coast did not back until, uh, not middle December, but the 7th or 8th of December. They, they finished mid-August. So let me ask you this question. I've asked this to Carl and you'd know given you'd been on the list quite recently is why wouldn't they do the exit interviews before they go on holidays and I say that because as a player wouldn't you don't you like to know what your your future or lack of future is at a footy club yeah, you, I was really surprised why that didn't happen yeah I, they, honestly it usually does yeah so why is the exit interviews I mean obviously Jackson Nelson those guys they, they, I think they would have had their exit interviews struck pretty pretty quickly they, they had their like, what, what would have happened you finish the year Saturday Sunday whatever it is uh, Monday is usually a few drinks Tuesday Wednesday um, exit interviews yep so they do them all then and, I see and, they're all done yep. yeah and Jackson yeah so you, you're not required back at the club but like, they would have told Jacko Nelson for instance hey look this is yeah, likely to, yeah, yeah this is what's likely playing out yep um, unless something drastic happens, so he would have known. Yes, and okay. Then, yeah, so they, they, they would have done. They they have to actually. You, you're not. You you cannot be contacted by the footy club mm. um, in, in a period of time, which like it just lends itself. I, I think West Coast, given their list position, it's just not a good preparation because players aren't professional enough um, to go and do, or they're probably not paid enough either to go and do these 
camps that uh, an American sportsman would do to go and sort mm. themselves out. You mm. are required to look after yourself, which has been happening for a long time. But a list profile at West Coast, they, they, a lot of those guys might not know how to actually come back in great shape to, to attack this year in, in such a long break. Two, three months, that's great. It's almost four months mm. that they're going to be away from the footy club. Now, don't think that West Coast players will be sitting around doing nothing and ha- having a good time. Yes, they go on, they, you go and travel straight after the season, but pretty much off-season for AFL players is training four or five times a week. Like, you, 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 you're training, and then if you're not training, you can do you know have a, have a bit of fun and, and chill out. You're not required at the club, but you are working your ass off in off-season, especially if you want to come back in good, good shape. So... I just found it really interesting. You know, Frio is different because Frio made the second week of finals. So they were playing for another and training at the club for another mm. three, four weeks. West Coast go out before the pre, like the finals buy. I, I don't know. I don't think that's a good prep for West Coast Eagles. No, but when you can't, if you finish outside the eight, you finish outside the eight. Yeah, I mean, you, you probably can't avoid that. Like, and I, <clears> without going to next year, I, I think they can spike. I mean, you, you, you're going to spike. You win two You'd games. So. You, there's only one way to go. But I think they. I mean, I think you get blokes fit. They've got too many quality players on that list not to be far more competitive. Waffle, waffles up this weekend. You and I are calling the grand final. I believe. Yeah, West Perth, Claremont, Claremont. Tigers got hold of uh, East Fremantle yesterday, Smashed them. Um, Smashed which them. is a disappointing end of the season for the Sharks. They win a qualifying final against uh, the same opposition. Lose to West Perth in a pretty competitive game. But yesterday. Um, be honest, I didn't see it. I was at the airport in Melbourne, but I, I was sort of watching bits and pieces of it. Yeah, they were they were jumped and never recovered. So yeah, lead of a level. I think it's gonna be a bit of fun on Saturday because yeah. um, I love that they've gone like the the, the local oval rather yeah. than Optus. Yeah, I'll not put it this way. If it's two, say West Perth and East Perth, for instance, uh, Optus Stadium would be great. We have thirty thousand people, and and it's it's a call. I mean, let's be honest. Most of the domestic or the community grounds like Leadable, Bassendine, they're they're all. I mean, they're they're waffle grounds. Yeah. So they're not really built for, for corporate hospitality or big crowds, obviously. So I'm not sure what, 14,000 on Saturday? Look, weather's going to be great. Hmm. Atmosphere will be terrific. The precinct will be outstanding. So on that front, yeah, it'll oh, be... Yeah, I just be, do yeah. think... I, I probably don't... I'm not looking at more of a commercial area, but like, I just think the atmosphere will be way better with 15,000 people be lady than, you know, you know what, 30,000 Optus. I just, you just don't get the... It's just yeah. empty. And the other thing is, of course, being West Perth's spiritual home ground... It'll give uh, all the garlic munchers they used to be. Uh, for, they used to, the gar- you probably don't remember being a gentleman, but they, they were called the Cardinals going back many moons ago. Right. And, and the garlic munchers were the, uh, the the term that was used in, in, a, in a, a loving sense, wasn't yes. in, in a derogatory sense. But yeah, so a lot of the Italians will come out and they'll they'll hit the hit the Leaderville precinct and, um, and then go and watch their beloved uh, West Perth. Very good. Looking forward to it. There you go. There's the West Australian wrap. We'll get right into some trade stuff over the next couple of weeks. Uh, Will Schofield, Mark Redding, Shuttle Footy Cast. All right, let's get into the grand final, Skeeter. I know that you tried to get your ticket out of there. Cats absolutely destroy the Swans. 81 points to long defeat Sydney at the MCG. Grand final parade was an absolute, I believe, an absolute fizzer. It was an absolute fizzer. I saw a lot of sunglasses for starters. Oh, well, that was that confused me completely. I, see, I was watching on TV. My mum and I were going to go and watch. Um, I thought it might have been coming through the city, but it didn't even go near the city. Went uh, the river MCG. People had to walk for for K's. So boats were turned away early. Fans missed out. Absolute, absolute diabolical organisation. Apparently, um, there was sunglasses. Luke Parker lets go of the cup first. So I don't. I don't know what else you want me to well, say. I watched, tele- I watched a telecast, unless I'm seeing something that you didn't. I didn't. I, I, they cut every time I, I went had, to look at it, they, they cut I, away. I had I had a lot of eyes on the ground. It was surprising. Oh, really? me. My, my socials were lighting oh, that's up. That's right. I did see that. People were people were in the crowd. I was tagged in that as well, apparently. Apparently, apparently <laughs> Luke, well, they knew that you wouldn't be able to see it because you were still trying to hustle that ticket out of there. Um, yeah, it was, a, it was a great pre-match, though. Again, something you missed. I've gone back and watched... The pre-match because Have I had you? I had some mates there, Geelong boys who great game, very happy premiership done and dusted. But they said the best part of the day was Robbie Williams's entertainment. I know that I could hear it. I just couldn't see it, and I, it was just a case of I don't know, it was greedy. I just wanted to get rid of it anyway. But um, well, one of the great lines pre, pre-game, let's be honest, and uh, and Dan I think sort of hinted to this. I'm not sure it crossed your your path because maybe you didn't see it. That the, the quote from Anthony Albanese. Uh, talking about the parade itself and maybe having a go at Gill, he said, you know what, 
we need to stop the boats. That's <laughs> just a great line about obviously going back in time politically, but stop the boats. But and uh, I think you got good. some people who'd, who'd back him on that. Uh, Robbie Williams did Angels to dedicated it to Shane Warne and his family. He did uh, The Voice by John Farnham dedicated to John Farnham and his family. He was absolutely on fire. It's been rumoured he's paid over a million bucks, and everyone I've spoken Worth to it. said it should have been ten million. Mm. Like it was unbelievable. And what I watched, it was very, very good. Delta Goodrum was there. Who sung the national anthem? I didn't see the national anthem. Any, you wouldn't have seen. I won't ask you. Any idea, Dan? You can find that one out for me, please. First time back at the MCG since uh, 2019. It hasn't been a grand final there since 2019. And that was a dud game as well because that was Richmond taking the Giants to the cleaners. That's right. uh, and look. I, I'm not banging Geelong or Sydney per se, but it's it's. I'll, we all want to go to a good grand final, don't we? Yes. I mean, you want to go to a competitive game. I mean, even last year it was 70 points in yes. Perth, but it felt like a. It didn't feel like a blowout as as this one did yeah. early on. I'm not sure if you watched much I did, of it. I, did. I saw the first quarter. Yeah. So, but you, you knew at quarter time, didn't you, that your selection was wrong? So, yeah, I want to I want to break this one down. Uh, where at the moment, I knew, and a few people have spoken about, it, and it bloody hurts me to speak about it because the reason I was going for Sydney, mm. I masked this throughout the week, but I eventually came clean. It was Tom Hickey, right? So I spent time with him at West yeah. Coast, close with his family. He's had a you know pretty pretty difficult time over mm. the last twelve months. He's got twins. You would know all about that skater. He's right in the thick of things, and he finds himself in a grand final after playing at four teams over twelve years in the AFL. And, and it, you know, you don't deserve anything in footy or life or anything, but if someone deserved a grand final and a premiership winner, it would be him. And he just, oh, he butchered the start and he gave Geelong the start that they didn't need. It's Tom Hawkins. So I've played on Tom quite a few times and I, you know, I'm three years out of the game now and what was always written at the top of my um, prep sheet was do not get caught in front of Tom Hawkins. Now that is... In a contested marking situation, you can't get caught in front of him because he just put, pushes you out, marks the ball. But in the ruck, you cannot get caught in front of Tom Hawkins because he pushes you out, mm. kicks goals. So he kicks the first two goals there from ruck, ruck contests. He had another shot before those from the boundary. So Tom Hawkins is firing. It just, just It's not about Tom Hickey, but that's collectively as a Swans team – it tells me they weren't prepared. It, t- it tells me they weren't prepared to win the game, which sounds outrageous, but I've been in a game, 2015, where I, looking back, I wasn't prepared to win the game. I was prepared to play in a grand final and you know, enjoy the week and you know, play a side in Hawthorne that we'd beaten during the year and we'd beaten in finals. And well, it just happened again. We're just going to rock up and play well. And of course, you're going there to win, but... It's almost like a hope. Like I, hope, I hope we rock up and play well. And that's what Sydney That's what Sydney looked like. And, they, and then they didn't. And Geelong did. <laughs> that's the other thing. It's not like Geelong sort of mediocre. They were on from the first bounce. You could tell. You could tell. And you're right, though. Do, do you feel like Sydney were a bit bunny in the headlights? Was it, was it that? It, yeah, you could see it. You could see it. Just th- things that they hadn't done all year, they, they did. So, is it, so, so just talk us through in brief that the mindset, when you say things that they did all year, it, it, how does that just um, dissipate Evaporate, yeah. Yeah, in, in, on, a, on the big stage? I'm, I know how it can, but yeah. It's mental. Yeah. It's, it's mental. And that's the preparation element. And I feel fortunate that I can actually speak about this with some knowledge. Because, Both sides of the equation. Mate, you've because, done because 2018, I look at, I wrote an article on this and, and I hadn't thought about it for a while, just the different mindsets. Like 2015, it was like, oh my God, we're in a grand final. Let's get, the, get everyone. Everyone tickets, buy, for, buy everyone's flights and have a great time. And this is awesome. We've got a young club, which is what Sydney was. Mm. And then 2018, you look at it and it was like, I don't care about anything else. More like hard-nosed. Winning this game. Mm. Like it does because you, you lose like Sydney do. And they will they will look back at – that's not a good memory. That'll sting. Yeah, forever. Like they, they'll never live that down. And they, hopefully they get another chance, but who knows. So that's, that is the only part of you've got to lose one to win one. Now, that doesn't always ring true, but – but what they will learn out of losing that is exactly what I'm talking about. The preparation element, what you actually have to do to win it. You can't, it's not a normal game. You can't just rock up, hope to play well. And Geelong know that too. That's why they were. They've been there. They're exactly the same yeah, situation. That's right? why they were so, you know, so sizzly. Geez, it was disappointing for Logan McDonald to miss out, wasn't it? Um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's, there are a couple of hard luck stories. One from, yep. from Sydney, one from Geelong. Um, Holmes misses out. Logan misses out. Logan's through form, of course. Yeah. Um, Which Sam is probably Reed. fair. Yeah, yeah, he didn't didn't have a good prelim. But then you look at what happens with Sam Reid. Exactly, and Sam Reid 
he, he wasn't 100% fit, surely. And he was injured during the game. Either way, I don't, it, that wouldn't have mattered. But what, the bloke you do feel sorry for is Max Holmes because he, even if he played for two minutes, yeah. he, he's a premiership player. Mm. Um, and uh, that that's just the hard luck. So, and for him, I'm tr- trying to think of an 18 who... <clears throat> Who missed? Who was Shepherd Gas? Sh- yeah, well, it's, yeah, they sort of knew. Well, yeah, early on. Oh, you talking you about know? late? There's, no, there's nothing late. Though. Shep, no one was. Shep was the last out. We made no change from the prelim. No. Um, uh, you know there was, but the, yeah, the, the, that that is one thing I did want to touch on is the, you know the hard luck stories. Like you have the obvious ones. So Holmes is obvious, but you know I think back to. 18, and we had guys like Eric McKenzie sort of finishing up. Mm. You know, Matt Prittis has played for a long time. One of Brownlow, played in 15, doesn't get the opportunity. Bo Waters, same. Sam Butler, same. So you have a lot of guys around the periphery. Like Sean Higgins might be a sort of a guy yeah. for Geelong like that that you wouldn't immediately think of who's been at the Bulldogs, who have won a flag. Mm. Um, North Melbourne, they, had some, they did have some success when he was at the footy club, but they didn't quite get to the top. And then he goes to Geelong – and probably wants a danger field type story, but you know, he, he sits and watches from the sideline. So, you know, again, though, um, that's how fo- that's how footy goes. Yeah, you're right. And you talk about a couple of those players and Sammy Butler and Bo Waters, who did have some. Again, if you've got a premiership, that's sort of yeah. for as an outsider, you go, well, that's, yeah, we're happy you've already been looked after. But ones that had, like Matty Pritis, for instance, yeah. you go, oh, it would have been nice for him to have had that moment. But you're right, footy doesn't owe you anything. And no. um, guys like Jeremy Cameron have been. Try and ban Paddy Dangerfield have been trying their backside off for so long. <laughs> meanwhile, Isaac Smith just won his eighth <laughs> premiership in senior footy because he was a VFL player before he, yeah. was, he was playing. So all he does is win flags. Isaac Smith has 32 touches, kicks three goals. Norm Smith in his fourth flag, the oldest ever Norm Smith medalist. Like, pr- pretty cool story. Oh, great story. I mean, and the fact he's been able to change clubs, go from, I mean, it wasn't like he was going from a struggling club to a, a, a powerhouse. Yeah. He was going. Just he's the Midas touch, mate. Some blokes have got it, and um, I was really happy for him. And I, he's, he said his pop was his hero. He lost his pop. Um, yeah, on the way, uh, we, we saw him on Wednesday. Mate passed away during the week. Yeah, recently. Um, so that's a, that's a, a beautiful touch. Jeremy Cameron, um, he, the celebrations from him, and, and <laughs> well, looking on social media yesterday, he put his medal. This on is the Mark. This is Mark Redding social media update. <laughs> No, please don't. I want to know. He's put the medal on his cow. Oh, I, 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 I had a few at lunch yesterday at a place called the Rising Sun. I'll tell you a very quick story about that. Rising Sun in South please Melbourne. Do, that, so I've gone there Friday. This is a true story, and it's where the Sydney Swans all gathered for a drink. Now, there's a plaque. I've got it here, a picture of a plaque. It's dedicated to a guy called Val Perovic, who, Carlton player, look him up. You're, too, you're both too young, but and, yes. and I was sort of yeah, in my teens, maybe as a kid, watching him play. Um for Carlton, and a good player, and every time you know he kicked the ball it was woof, a bit like that with you know Adam Sard or right, right. all that. Anyway, there's a plaque, Ange Christou, exactly. There's a plaque saying Val Perovic uh, consumed 37 cans, 37 cans of 375, exactly the same as this. 37 of shelters, shelters, going back in the in the time, in two and a half hours, it might be two hours. Two hours, thirty, and he, apparently, the, the what's mi- the right? The, fan, the the sort of story was that he had six on the way to the pub on the, uh, to get there, but thirty-seven. Into, it's a plaque, and so I said, um, there was. I'm gonna. I actually look it up. It was actually. It was, <laughs> and guess what? This is Friday afternoon when we're getting ready for the game. Yes. Who rocks up, and stands at the plaque? Val Perovic. Really, Val Perovic. It was just a brilliant story. And it's, so you were there yesterday as well. Is that what you say? No, we were just at lunch. Another okay. South Melbourne. Yeah, you know, we were actually there for lunch yesterday. Yes, there was a different part. It was having. We were so were you with the Sydney boys? Is that what you're saying? No, no, no. I was with a, a, a group from Channel oh. Seven. We were just having a bite. I to you were saying the Sydney players. Right? No, no, not the Sydney players. No, we were just with just Val Perovic. Val Perovic. Perovic. Yeah, thirty-seven beers. I'm just trying to figure that's out the road. I'm not very good with maths, but that's 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 going quick, isn't it? Isn't that like one every f- five minutes? It, it's it's amazing going. Um, so it look, sounds like responsible drinking. I'll, show, I'll pass it on to you anyway. But it's Val Perovic, it says, uh, 37 in two hours, witnessed by the hotel patrons, teammates, and his very nervous dog. So <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, there you go. I digress. Uh, that's very good. You didn't put that to – you didn't challenge that, did you? You didn't, you didn't no, ch- no, no, no. I just, I just, I've got that fight. I'm not going to – no, I just thought it would be an interesting touch given what Jeremy Cameron did with the cow. Very good. Um, Sam DeConing kicked his first goal, mm. his first career goal in the grand final. He won't live that down as a backman. Joel Salwood kicks a goal in 
potentially his last game of footy. I just a very very quick hot take on it. I reckon he's retiring. Just looking at just just you just, reckon what. I thought this was the most obvious thing oh, of grand okay. final week. No, oh, I'm okay. not saying the best yet. Oh, yeah. oh, great. Hey, I, I, I wasn't sure if people were sort of saying, oh, maybe he'll go again. Oh, I, I thought it was – I yes. thought pre-game. He's retired, he? He okay, just, saw, he just thought – it was uh, – yeah, and I think it's obvious. The, the way they came to him, yeah. all that. It just had retirement written all over it. Or is it just because they love him so much? I reckon – Because he reckon he's come out and said that he feels as good as he – I know he does, but, mate, what, seriously, he's 34. I can imagine the club champs night. Wouldn't you announce it then? Yeah, you're not announcing it before the grand final. I, 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 in saying that I think you retire, I wouldn't be surprised if you went again. Yeah. Oh, look, just the the body Great, language. Greatest, greatest ever Geelong player. It's a big call, isn't it? I know that's been mentioned. I mean, you're looking at guys like, you know, whether it's the Ablett's father-son combination, Polly. I mean, they've had some absolute yeah. superstars. Like, but, I'm not going to challenge it. He's going to be games gonna, holder. He's going to be in the, in the conversation for best ever, isn't he? And Cap- rightfully so. Premiership captain. Won other premierships. I, I don't know what else he can do in the game, really. And, and a good bloke? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, good bloke. And and his players love him. So. Yeah, well, it ticks all the boxes. What about the best players? I like this from the grand final. Isaac Smith, best player, 14 votes in the Norm Smith medal. Dandruff Field had 10 votes in the Norm Smith. Hawkins, no votes in the Norm Smith medal. He was third best. He kicked three goals, four. Fair, fair day for a key forward. He kicks f- five, three, then he's... You know, better than Buddy, I yeah. would have thought. Uh, his day out, another forgettable yes. grand final for Lance. Uh, Stengel kicked three; he was fourth best. Selwood fifth best, and I, I call him Miroslav Close. There's a, there's a German soccer player called Miroslav Close. Okay, uh, Close. That's a, that's a bloody good effort. Him getting in the best players. Yeah, absolutely. And they well, just look at the experience in that group there. It's just, I mean, Stengel takes Stengel out of the equation. Quite close, young bloke. Uh, and then you you look down at at Sydney and. Chad Warner. I mean, well, yeah. if you're going to take one thing out of from Sydney, he it's had a bloody good game. Almost had 30 touches, kicked two goals, and held his head up high. Uh, I'll tell you right now, Sydney will, that, that'll sit with them for for a long period of time until until they get a chance to redeem themselves in the grand final. Doesn't always happen though, as you know. Correct. Go oh, no, that, that group will never play together again. No, they're, no. They're, they're, as in, they won't get a chance. That as a collective, group. yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't know who it'll be, but someone will change out of that group. Of course, it always does, doesn't yep. it? I mean, you think of the Giants in '19; they got there. They're just, they're just not no. not guaranteed to get back in the short term. Yeah, so that's it. The grand final. Did you did you see the final siren at the grand? I final? saw the final siren. I'll be totally honest. I sort of lost a bit of um, interest during the mm. course of the day and um, just went and off the wood. I just yeah, just just decided to just kick back and uh, uh, enjoy the sights and sounds. No, I, I I love the day. I love it. and you know it's a great day, yeah. great occasion. It just the 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 contest wasn't there, so I was just a bit bit. And I, mate, there were people just wandering. Uh, particularly Swan supporters, but uh, neutrals are sort of it didn't didn't quite get you the match itself, but that that can happen in a grand final. Well, did you watch it, Daniel? Uh, I watched it at a mate's place. Very disappointed. It's like Christmas Day for me. You wake up, you're excited, yeah, exactly, exactly, yeah. And then you get there, and it's like you get dud presents. And you're like, talking to the family, you don't really want to speak. Exactly, to. And yeah. Then, yeah. And like the, someone's butchered the food a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> no, I did. I did have. Uh, a but good sometimes, time. sometimes you get a good, like a good Christmas That's lunch. Right. I will. I did want, have one bit of info for you from the grand final. Um, you were talking about the um, national anthem. Mm. It was Katie Noonan. Yeah. Not not really familiar with her no, line no. of work. But according to dailymail.co.uk... Oh, which yeah, is yeah, trusted sources <laughs> of news. Well, no, trusted sources of news in Australia. Um, apparently her performance divided fans with many either loving or hating Katie's signature soprano falsetto. Oh, so it was so a bit of an opera a bit rendition. Of a, bit of a... Mm, one of those ones. And I don't think everyone loved it. Okay. So there you go. Did you love it, Dan? I didn't hear it. No. <laughs> and I was, I was getting it. the multis. I don't know. I think I heard it. I just didn't... Um, I was just trying to work out how to which gate to go into. No, it's uh, it was a good look. The, I think the AFL massive massive tick for the the pregame stuff, and I think yeah, it was it was huge. And um, yeah, Geelong boys are still. How long do you celebrate this for, uh, Scoey? Is it a, is it a week or less than? I mean, I'll give you our schedule if you like. Like we we had the best and fairest Friday, so we played Saturday, Melbourne Sunday, um, flew back. I had Thursday off, but I went yeah Monday. Monday, Tuesday, yeah, sun, yeah, Sunday, Monday. So you came back here, I think you came back on the Sunday yeah, afternoon. Went to the Camfield. Um, yep. We did the, the fan thing, mm-hmm. went to the Camfield, then went out. Went out Monday, tu- got tattoos Tuesday. A little you got bit. tattoos? Yeah, mate. Everyone's got them, mate. Really? Oh. There you go. Little West Coast tattoo. Oh, all at, Yeah, all at someone's house. Tuesday, <laughs> Wednesday, and Look then down. had a rest Thursday. 
best and fairest Friday, so back on the horse. And then we went to Hong Kong for the footy trip, uh, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. By Tuesday, probably the worst um, mental and physical shape I've ever Cooked. been in my life, yes. Yeah. But uh, so yeah, that, if there's anything to go by, maybe 10, 10 to twelve days. 10 to, that's a big. That's a big hit out. That's a big session. So um, uh, thoughts are with you, Geelong players. All the best, and to the cow of uh, Isaac Smith. Ah uh, no, Jeremy Cameron. All the best too. Shelter Footy Cast. That's done and dusted. Grand final review. One of the better reviews I would have thought going around. <laughs> Shelter Footy <laughs> Cast. Two Will, blokes who didn't see much of the footy. Will Schofield, <laughs> Mark Reddings. We're gonna get into a couple more things just after this. Last one of the year in the footy realm, Shelter XBA X Factor. We're going to get some of these out. Um, we're going to start getting into a few other sports here on the Shelter Footy Cast. So stay with us post footy season. Don't go anywhere. Mark Rennings will be here. I'll be here. We're going to get some cricket experts in, some soccer experts in. Some just, just some experts. We'll stop. <laughs> <laughs> we're, done. we're lacking that at the moment. So we are on the search for an expert. If you do know one, let us know. Shelter Footy Cast on Instagram. Let us know who you'd like to see on this show. Hey, you know what? I um, This is not name dropping, but I was just... Uh, just you wandering towards a cab outside of the rising sun yesterday and uh, shout out to uh, to Kath Lockton from Fox who was sitting there I know a sister who works at Crown so I went up and said look say hello to your sister and she, no, she said to me you do a podcast with uh, Will Schofield and I said absolutely it's a shelter footy cast I said um I don't necessarily know how to find it because I'm not really great with <laughs> But I'm on it, yes. What a salesman. <laughs> Did you give her the footy ticket? You could have given her the grand final ticket. Yeah, it was a bit late uh, uh, yesterday afternoon. But anyway, well, she, she knows of your podcast, of our, our, our podcast. podcast. Yeah, I know, but it's your, yeah, I'm, it's yours. What are you? Well, I'm just, I'm sort of like the, 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 the third wheel, aren't I? Just sort of, you and Dan are like travel around the world together and share rooms and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> Shelter XBA X Factor, <laughs> WA boy. I yes. think we're going to give it a WA boy. Do we give it to? There's two I have in mind. Yeah. Okay. No, I'm def, no, I'm definitely going the, the Geelong boy. Okay. I was just Warner. Nah, know. we got to give one. He's going to have enough in his uh, in his oh. system in the next couple give of days. Give it to the Geelong boy. And also a, a Trinity College product, uh, yeah. Mitch Duncan. Very good. So he's a. It's hard to imagine he's a West Aussie, but it feels like he's lived there his his whole life, which he has, and he's been. Um, outstanding for the footy club, and he gets uh, his second premiership off the top of my head. I got to reckon, I think he was at there twenty eleven. I'm sure he played in twenty eleven. Oh, yeah, he did. And so he has twenty seven touches, kicks a goal, thirteen marks. It's a reasonable day. Yeah, it absolutely is. Well done, uh, big uh, big Mitchy Duncan. Really good stuff there. Shout out footy cast. If you do want to get in touch with us and send us an email. You can do it, and we'll probably read it out. Footycast at shelterbrewing.com.au. Get them in. This is from Alex. I hope it's uh, – yeah, If look, I would like to put a request. If you'd like to heat Skeeter up, I will read it. It doesn't matter what it is. I'll 100% read it. So I haven't read this yet, but let's see how we oh, go. Oh, yeah, right. Okay. Hi, Skeeter and Scully. You were talking about suspensions in finals last week. What about if finals had a different weighting for suspension weeks or suspension points, if you like? So round one of the finals is worth one week off your suspension. A suspension. Round two is worth two weeks Prelims worth three weeks and the grand final worth four weeks off your suspension. Finals are not the same as normal games and shouldn't be treated so. If you have three games left on your suspension, you can play the grand final but have to serve the rest of your suspension at the start of the next season. So what do you think from Alex? So it's almost like a compensatory it's, finals. We want the best players out there. Yeah, it's convoluted. It's confusing. And I've got no idea. No, really. I mean, if you if you go and whack someone, I think you there has to be a price to pay for... For that, I don't think you can just. I know we all want the best players. That I'm more concerned about having a bloke concussed, a minor concussion in a prelim final, and he misses out on a GF. Um, yeah, that's, that's what. Ha- that's why I would have the buy before the GF. But um, yeah, I'm not so sure about it. I will tell you, there was there's an NRL guy who has been <clears throat> charged with assault. I'm not sure if he's been convicted, but he, the NRL has, gave him. Uh, the opportunity to have his suspension served at the start of next season because his team, I think it's Penrith or Parramatta, um, obviously still on Penrith and Parramatta are playing in the GF this week. It's like, how, so they've put they that they've done in in many ways what this Alex is 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 asking for. So maybe maybe that's where the ideas come from. But yeah, it's um, I don't know I don't know Scott. It, it doesn't sit comfortably. I, I could I could comfortably argue that um, I know which way you're going you to say. It in response to this but for the Brownlow medal that's me oh. ESPN alert um, for the Brownlow medal uh, I, I think you could take reports out of it and if you happen to win it and you've been rubbed out for, for five week, weeks for one week if you're good enough to win the Brownlow missing five weeks yeah. what do you think about that yeah I look at- because like, I think the Brownlow medal needs a bit of a revamp of some, some description it's just a midfielder's it is junk and, and it didn't used to be 
It didn't used to be. There was a period of time there. Oh. I read an article and I can't remember any of the names, but there was five well, years. Well, well Jim, five Steins, years. Jim Steins was a right man. That's going back a long time. Yes, correct. I mean, when you go back to the early yeah, 80s, yeah, guys correct. like Peter Moore, I mean, Barry Round, there's 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 a few that have, have won. Be, look, I agree Ross, with you. Ross Van Denning. Yeah, Ross, Ross, you know, key position player, which is very unusual. Yeah. Um, but and even Brad Hardy was a you know defender, yep. small uh, defender. Um, yeah, I don't. You saying take the take the fairest out of the equation? Um, yeah, it's I, it won't happen because it's cast in stone, and um, many think that Paddy didn't fulfil his end of the bargain anyway this year, and uh, <laughs> getting getting off that two weeks. But yep, correct. He, he gets the the brown on. Uh, Good luck to him. Follow us on socials, Shelter Footy Cast on Instagram. Watch us on YouTube. Search Back Chat or Shelter Footy Cast playlist. You can listen to us on podcasts wherever you listen to your podcasts. Stay with us on the Shelter Footy Cast. It's going to be transitioning into a little bit more broader sport, but we are going to get right through the trade period, get to all the news, all the action throughout there. So stay with us here on the Shelter Footy Cast. Mark Reddings, Will Scope will be with you throughout the next couple of months. <laughs>